want to invite Sierra Dudgeon to come up here and to share with us her story of her mission around the world. And as she does that, I encourage you to uh, look at this scripture on your program. Will you look at this scripture, please? This scripture says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in, in various ways. But in these last days, God spoke to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He also made the universe. I find it fascinating that God would come to earth and to speak to us through His Son and give us wisdom to know God in a deeper way. God is a missionary God, and he sends us out on mission, and he sends us to go and to proclaim his word and to live our life as a light in the world. So, Sierra, will you share with us about the 11-month mission you went on and some things that you saw God doing around the world? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> I'm really excited to speak. I love speaking, but I don't really know what I'm doing. So, Holy Spirit, <laughs> You're welcome here. So I just wanted to kind of start by showing you some of the countries that we went to and some of the ministries that we did because I'm just really thankful for all the love and prayers and financial support and everything that this body had supported me with and I want to bring it all back to you. So I gave some pictures that I was just going to kind of go through them and talk about what I did each month. So this first picture, I'm not in it, but I love this picture. This was in Mozambique, which Mozambique is like, holy cow. I swear, I'm like, I think the Garden of Eden was here because this place is rough. And it's like, it's this desert. You just, the, everyone is like impoverished and like people live in these mud huts and mud huts are actually like really nice houses. Usually they live in like cloth. So it was really just like, especially being our first month coming out of America, it was like such a big difference to see like this building behind them. That was actually the church that we went to and it was like a nice church. And this woman here in the green, Capuana, um, her name is Flora and she was one of our people that we worked with. And what we did is walked around the, the villages and we just prayed for people for two hours every day. That's all we did. Just walked around, prayed for people. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite places because it was just so different from what I'm used to and what we're used to. But these people have so much joy in the midst of like nothing. And you go to church and when they worship, they worship with their whole bodies. Like they just like dance and like all of our songs I realized are kind of like slow, like you know, amazing. Like it's just kind of slow. But there's like they turn up. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. They just get really excited and they like, they have some moves. So it was really fun just praying with those people. Our next country was Swaziland and that was also, Mozambique is in Africa. I don't know if I said that. Swaziland, also in Africa. Swaziland, we worked with this base that feeds children. They have care points. So this is me. I'm in the red shirt at a care point and what a care point does is they have older women in the community make food for the children because the children that aren't in school don't really eat. So before they go to like first grade or whatever, they come here and that's where they eat. And the older women, like they older, so they don't have a lot of like energy and they're cooking all the time and doing their own house stuff to keep it clean. So we went in, played with the kids, cleaned up a little bit, kind of like prayed over everything. Yeah, that was a really fun month. All the kids are so cute. So we can go to the next slide. So Madagascar was the next country we went to, also in Africa. There we evangelized door to door and taught um, little kids English. So that's a picture of me um, teaching a little boy, probably like the days of the week or something. And then Malaysia was interesting. We went to Asia. And um, our first couple months, we just did what is called Ask the Lord. So usually when we went to a country, we would have hosts set up. 
and we the host was in charge of everything and they would be like okay go pray for these people or go preach or like clean the house or play with kids or those kinds of things um but then when we got to malaysia we didn't have hosts so we really relied on the holy spirit and would just pray like okay god who are you going to send me today what are we going to do um yeah so malaysia we met this guy right here on the corner and we met him and just kind of became friends with him and we hiked this like Batu cave temple thing with him and we just like prayed over him and tried to love on him a little bit. And so that's kind of um, what ATL was. We can go to the next slide. So I, oh, my team and I decided to go to Singapore one weekend. And so we actually got to go to 13 countries, which was really cool. And yeah, so Singapore, we did ask the Lord. So we honestly showed up in the middle of the night didn't have anyone, I don't recommend this by the way, but we didn't have anyone, like anywhere to stay because um, it was too expensive. We only have $5 a night. So uh, yeah, we showed up and we had to actually sleep on the street, which Singapore is super clean. So it was okay. We were like, God, like where you, like, you know, we wanted to come here and have an adventure. Like, can you just send us someone? And um, we went to this church and met this woman. She's actually my age. So she was 23. Her name's Roseanne. How she's like one of the funniest people I've ever met. She came over to us and said, hey, the Holy Spirit told me to just come over here and ask you to stay at my house. And so we ended up um, hanging out with her. This is us at a small group at her house. Um, so that was so cool how the Lord showed up and provided for us and answered our prayer. And this next picture is of me and my team in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was also Ask the Lord. So again, um, we just prayed and asked the Lord for people to work with and it was crazy because like this month was really hard <laughs> and we actually didn't find like have anyone to minister with we didn't meet anyone but this is the month I learned the most and I actually didn't learn very much during the month because so much was happening but now like reflecting on it the Lord really showed me so much about spiritual warfare and how that works in like the physical realm battle tactics and the Holy Spirit stuff. So it was crazy. Uh, so Thailand, we were only there for two weeks. Actually, my whole team got sick. <laughs> One girl had dengue fever. So she was in the hospital. Um, we stayed in Bangkok and it was kind of just a nice two weeks of rest. I did yoga and yeah, it was just a nice time to like be in the word and those kinds of things. Myanmar, we also had to ask the Lord for hosts. So we actually met a monk and he said, i teach English and I'm always looking for Americans to come teach English. Yeah, we went to the school, shared our testimonies in English with these um, people and they kind of just learn English through like conversation. So it's a cool way to teach and give them something but also share our testimony of like who God is and stuff. So India, I worked at a girls school. I love like all these women. They're so amazing. And they look like they're teenagers but they're actually like 28. <laughs> um, yeah, but they love the Lord. They know so much about him. One of the things I really learned that month was like, because these girls were so mature with the Lord and like walking with the Lord, I was just kind of like, I'm not really needed here, you know? Like they don't really need me to teach them or whatever. Like they know more than I do about Bible. And But it was cool because God really showed me that it's not about being needed, it's about being present and letting him meet you where you're at, which is gonna kind of play into what I'm gonna be talking about a little bit. So then Nepal, we actually worked with sex trafficking victims and we went to brothels and they're called dance bars, but it would be like the equivalent of a strip club here. And we met with the girls and they have a home for them. So we talked to them like, if you wanna get out of what you're doing, um, you can come with us and live at this home and we'll give you a job. And then they also like, they yeah, they provide jobs for these women and also like disciple them. So that was really cool. And Nepal's beautiful. <laughs> Next slide. <clears throat> Costa Rica, that was a weird month. We did a lot of manual labor. This is us at a church uh, macheting plants and raking and stuff. We also painted a maximum security prison, which like sounds really cool, but it, it was kind of like whatever. <laughs> it wasn't as cool as it sounds, but that was really fun. Just got to bless people by doing work for them. Nicaragua was my second to last month. We worked at a boys' school and taught them English, and I love those boys. They were so much fun. 
Um, they really just like radiated the joy of the Lord. And then there should be the last slide here. Um, this was El Salvador. This month we worked with YWAM, and YWAM is an amazing organization, and um, they kind of do whatever. So we were working in a slum. We would go to the slum with them every day and just kind of help them prepare, prepare food and, and do their ministry. So those were, that was kind of a basic, really short recap of every month. I really wanted to share that with you guys because if it were me and like I was listening to myself, I'd really want to know what I was doing. So yeah, I hope that was fun for you to know. Yeah, so one of the things that the Lord really taught me was like, I would go to all these countries and there were already ministries in place and there was already like a body of Christ like in place doing everything and a lot of the time I would show up and I kind of had this expectation of like I'm going to show up and like do all these things and serve all these people and like change lives and like people are going to get saved and all this stuff because of like God's like using me to do this and whatever but like actually what would happen is I was get there and like they wouldn't really need our help like it was kind of just nice to have us and we would kind of do the chores that people don't really get around to because they're not that important and it's just kind of like oh it'd be nice you know if the grass was cut but that's not our first priority but since you guys are here like why don't you do that or something it was kind of hard sometimes because you would just be like I'm really not needed you know like why am I even here and so finally like I really prayed about it with the Lord, and he's like, it's not about being needed, Sierra. It's just about being here in this moment. And, like, God just showed me that he's just, like, constant, and he doesn't, because of that, like, every second, like, he's here. And just really feeling that, like, every second he's here. So be, like, I need to be here, and I need to be present, whether that's, like, doing the chore that no one really wants to do or like just kind of being brushed aside because I'm not really needed or whatever, just like having joy in that. Um, so that was like a really cool thing. Um, I think um, before the race, I went to this passion conference and it's for college kids. And um, it's like, yeah, there were like 50,000 people. It was in Houston. It was really crazy, really cool. Um, Christine Kane, she is a speaker, she's amazing, um, but she said something that really has stuck with me throughout, like, ever since I heard it, which was about two years ago, and so she said, there's going to be a time for, like, you to go out and build God, God's kingdom, and there's also a time where um, God builds you, but they both work together, and, like, you need God to build you before you can go out and build his kingdom. So at the time, I was sitting here, or there in Houston, and I was like listening to this, and I was, I had, I was just about to apply for the world race, and I was like, yeah, when I go on the world race, that's going to be my time to build kingdom, and like, I'm so excited to do that. But it's kind of, yeah, I was just kind of ended up being wrong about that, what the Lord showed me is that, like, yeah, just time and location and how that plays into um, his rhythm. So, like, um, I took notes on my phone. <laughs> he kind of, yeah, God showed me on this trip his heartbeat and his rhythm. It's kind of like, you know, a heartbeat. It's like this, and it's kind of like the waves of the ocean go like this, and they all have, like, a rhythm, and it's like, one flat line, but it kind of goes up and down. Yeah, so the Lord really showed me that. He gave me this vision, actually, of, yeah, it's cool, because he gave me a vision in Mozambique, my first country, and then I forgot about the vision, and then I had it again in El Salvador, and he, like, did a lot more in the second time that he gave it to me, so I was like, oh, this is crazy. But basically, the vision was just of, like, Abraham. Abraham uh, was, like, called into a new name, and so God told Abraham, like, in his old age, you're going to be a father of many, and Abraham was like, what? <laughs> I'm too old. I can't have kids or whatever, you know, and God's like, no, like, you're, you're going to have a new name, and it's going to be father, and he gave him this promise. This song that I really like, it's actually called Abraham. It says, um, 
there is a mountain in between all you have said and all I can see. Um, I was listening to this song and just thinking of that. And um, yeah, it just kind of gave me a picture of like Abraham standing here and God's right next to him. And God's like, Abraham, I've given you this promise and like, or like this promised land and a new name. And it's um, on the other side of this mountain. And if you want it, like you have to climb up this mountain and then, you know, climb down and to, yeah, into your promise. At the beginning of the race, um, God didn't tell me this part. He just gave me a vision of me climbing a mountain with him. Then in El Salvador, he kind of explained, like, what that was. Yeah, it's, again, like, that mountain, like, that heartbeat, you know, and, like, God's rhythm all flowing together. And um, so, yeah, Pastor Reed gave me this verse. It's Luke, or sorry, Matthew. Um, was it on here or did I? Okay, I'll read it. It's on the screen. Oh, oh this is great. Um, so when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there and, um, until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child and kill him. So, um, yeah, he took the child during the night, left for Egypt. Uh, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet out of Egypt, I call my son. Yeah, so it all kind of like ties in together to me and my spirit of just like, God like gives us these journeys because he's present and constant. He gives us a journey. And a lot of the times we're looking at the destination. So like I was kind of, imagine me as like, Abraham and like God's like Sarah I'm giving you a new name and a promise and like you know your new name is like missionary and you're gonna go go be missionary and like and then you're gonna step like the promise is over here but you have to actually do the journey first and climb the mountain like I was thinking about the destination over here but God's like no you have to like climb the mountain first and um, he kind of did that with Mary and um, Joseph too of like well first with Mary when you know she's trying to like get married and all this stuff and then God just like totally interrupts her schedule and he's like hey you're gonna be pregnant and she's like wait what and so you know she had to be interruptible and obedient to that and God gave her a new name of like you're gonna be a mom and um, yeah on top of being a wife and Um, like that's your promise and same for Joseph like you're gonna be a father and like that's your promise and they had to go back to Bethlehem before they could receive their promise and um, of like you know the birth of Jesus so they go on this journey back to Bethlehem and it's funny because the Bible doesn't really talk about like all the emotions and all the things that they're going through on this journey, you know, but they probably had a lot to talk about. I mean, that's just, I'm guessing they talked about a lot and prayed about a lot and had to rely on the Lord. Yeah, so they go to Bethlehem. It's kind of like, you know, their spirits were like climbing this mountain and they get there and then, you know, they go down and enter the promise and have Jesus and um, they're called by their new names. But then again, like Herod's after them to kill their son. So after they got their promise and everything, like they have to go out again (laughs) and go on another journey. And, you know, it doesn't just stop. Like it's that heartbeat and it's that rhythm that's just going like this all the time. And it's constant and like a flat line, but you have ups and downs along the way. Yeah. So the Lord just kind of gave me that picture to share with you all today. And um, I just wanted to impart like um, kind of just ask the Lord maybe, like, where am I in this journey? Um, you know, like, am I standing at the bottom of the mountain and you just whispered your new promise to me? Or am I climbing the mountain right now and, um, like, you're right next to me, like, pushing me through it? Or am I at the top of the mountain and, like, I'm entering into my inheritance? And God uses, like, our physical prospering to um, kind of control like how our soul is prospering. So like your um, location 
and your spirit tie in together. And um, so, like, uh, for me, when I was, um, I was standing at the bottom of the mountain when God was like, I'm telling you to, you know, go on this world race to do this mission. On the mission, I was climbing up the mountain, and then now it's like, I thought I kind of entered my inheritance, but now I'm on a whole nother journey. And um, I'm only, like, I'm actually kind of like Mary, like, I'm actually supposed to be getting married, but God was like, no, first you need to go back to Greeley, and you need to go back and share what I've given you. And instead of, like, entering your inheritance of, like, being married to this man, like, you need to go back home, and, like, you're still on month 12. You're still, you know, you're going to do month 13 in Greeley, too. Like, you need to still be on that journey. And then once I step into, like, this marriage, that's my new name. That's my promise. That's my inheritance that he's given me. But then there's going to be a whole nother one. You know, it just keeps going. Um, so, yeah, just kind of, like, are you currently standing here excited? God's given you a new name, a new promise. Um, if that's where you're at, then, like, you probably need to be in praise and in prayer and, like, excitement and, like, a spirit of joy with the Lord. Um, and if you're climbing that mountain and you're kind of just, like, passing through um, or, you know, you don't really have a lot of, like, um, yeah, just, like, um, kind of constants and, like, time and relationships with people, but you're kind of just, like, all right, I'm just kind of going along and then, you know, I'll be somewhere for a long time later. Um, you probably need endurance, and like God needs to feed your spirit with endurance. And um, yeah, if you're standing in that inheritance, then like you need rest, and like you need the rest of the Lord. And then like one last thing I wanted to say is that um, God uses the body and uses these ministries that like they're here for a long time. They have relationships with people. He uses those to like build his kingdom. So like right now, um, you guys are all here and part of this body and you're all like, you know, builders. Yeah, if God sends you on a mission, then you're going to be um, not necessarily building, but you're going to be built. So when I was gone since we were changing uh, countries every month, like I was being built because everything around, I didn't have enough time to create these relationships and be with these people. Um, but, like, because of that, God really built me and showed me a lot. Um, so, yeah, now coming back and having this, like, I can pick a place and I can stay in one place and um, I can build those relationships. I can do those things, whether that's being a long-term missionary somewhere else or staying in Greeley, wherever that is, like, God's going to use me to pour back out and, like, I'll kind of be on that, um, on that heartbeat. So I just wanted to impart to everyone here um, just that, like, if you've been here a while, like, you're God's missionaries right now, and um, you're here for Greeley. Yeah, God is our inheritance, and we are his inheritance, and he um, is, like, overjoyed by us, and he actually sings over us, and he's singing over us right now, just as we're singing over him, um, and he came down from heaven and, like, wrapped himself in flesh to come here to be a missionary to us, which is so beautiful, and, like, God loves journeys so much, he gave himself a journey, like Jesus was on a journey for us. Um, there's this song that I really like by Hillsong, and it's called Seasons, and one of my favorite lines is, God could have saved us in a second, but instead he sent a child, and um, like Jesus was sent here, and he could have just come and like died right away to save us all, but he lived 33 years, and he was on this 33-year journey for us. I hope everything made sense, and if you have any more questions, there's a lot to share, so um, just let me know. <clears throat> Sierra, thanks for sharing with us and for 
talking to us about the mission. Um, I grew up a missionary kid, and I remember every summer I got to come to the church with my family. I remember, you know, the pastor would ask my father to share with us about the mission, and he would give him five minutes to share about a whole year and a half that we were gone. And I thought, that's pretty unfair. I mean, okay, I'm going to preach, and I'm going to do my thing, and then Mr. Olson, would you just share five minutes? What's a highlight that you had in the last year? The reason I gave Sierra 20 minutes to share is because that's barely even scratching the tip of the iceberg, but we want to know what it's like to be in the world, to go travel to other countries, to go see how God's Spirit works. The thing I heard this morning, Sierra, from you, is that we are either being built or we're building the kingdom. And it takes both. It's a both and. And it's an up and down. And it feels sometimes like, am I being built right now? God, is this a test? Are you testing me? Or can I serve in ministry and serve you too? I think it happens both at the same time. I love Christmas. I love how God's spirit works among us. I love this church. I love you. And I ask that as your heart leans into Christmas and you lean into all the fun and festivities. Ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do this year that's different than last year? What am I supposed to do, Holy Spirit? What do you want from me this year? If you pray that prayer, I guarantee you'll have the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. As we follow the Holy Spirit, we grow together and we learn from each other and we grow to be God's kingdom in the world, right? Will you receive the blessing this morning as you go? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you, both in his kingdom in heaven and here on earth. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.